Hi friends, this is Audi One and you're watching part 8 of Sequi Lab series. Well, today we would discuss blind based injections. For those who are watching this for the first time, it is recommended that you go back and watch the previous parts of the series. The links are mentioned in the description below. So let's start. For this, I have taken lesson 8. The default, we have to provide an ID with the parameter numeric value. So as we discussed earlier, we have to start with enumeration. So we get a message you are in as we got in the double injection. Let's try to break the query. Nothing happens. It just gets invalidated. We don't get the you are in on the screen. Let's try 100. Again, we don't get anything on screen. Let's try something, a string. We don't get anything on screen. Let's try double quotes. We don't get anything on screen. Let's try something else, a single quotes, an escape character, a double quotes, a bracket. Again, nothing happens. So technically, when we are trying to inject something, we don't get any kind of response saying that there was an error or a SQL query broke or something. Nothing is visible to us in form of errors and nothing is visible to us in form of any kind of output from the database. So in this kind of scenario, how can we proceed with the injections? Like first and foremost thing, we can never be sure of whether the injection exists on the page or does not exist. So it's totally blind to us. That is why these kind of injections are referred to as blind injections because we are not seeing what we are injecting or we just have to go with our instincts. We will not get any error message for our help which will help us build the query or something. So let's enumerate a bit. We say ID equals one. It says you are in ID two, you are in. Let's do ID three, you are in ID four, you are in. Let's go to ID eight, you are in ID nine. We don't get a message. That means Somehow there is a valid ID between 1 to 8 and as the ID is not valid, we don't get anything on screen. That means an invalid entry. So in this case, we have to try to guess the injection, how the injection could be. We have to totally guess what kind of query it could be and then we have to reliably build and reliably test if we can utilize this to extract the database. Now blind injections are classified in two categories. One category we call it boolean based injections and the other category we call it time based injections. We will discuss both of them but the first thing we have to do some basics plus the second thing we have to try to guess the query. In this chapter we will be doing boolean based injections. So boolean actually means a true or a false. 
let's try to build a query let's say we have one so we what we did in the previous chapters we broke the query so assume that the query gets broken although nothing is visible on screen but we we are assuming something that yeah it broke and something happened in the back end though the error is not visible to screen but something happened our assumption and then we will fix the query aha uh -huh, it worked so just based on the assumption we broke the query and then we try to fix the query let's see whether it works nicely or not yeah looks like it is working but we have to be double sure of okay so now we see that somehow we can iterate over 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 let's put a 9 here to see whether is it correct or not okay seems correct but let's do another test as we learnt before that by breaking the query and fixing the query we tend to make the left side and the right side so the left side of the query or the left side of injection is one apostrophe and the right side of the injection is the comments and in between we can inject what we want so let's use an and operator and one we can also type in and one equals one because one equals one will again evaluate back to one so making things simple i just chose one so we get the same message you are in now i'll change this one to zero to make it a false statement that means in totality we should not get any output and we are good now we are sure of that what we are injecting as code is being injected and rendered by the server at the back end but what benefit can this have to us can it help us or what because by just saying and zero or and one okay the code works but what if we try to do a query insert or let's say we do a query select table name from information schema dot tables where table underscore schema equals security or let's say the database where will it dump we don't have any anything where the information is visible on screen in the previous chapters we used the double query injection and we dumped the information in form of error but here even the errors are missing okay enough of theory let's do some practicals let's start our mysql prompt and let's learn some basics mysql hyphen u root hyphen p tool use security our default database okay so before continuing any further i would like to introduce to you a new function called length we use the basic query select database and this should return us security back okay it does now how big is this 
how what is the length of security so we can just encapsulate or we can just enclose this in the length function so we understand that it is eight characters long but still how can this be helpful we just have a boolean that says and one or and zero so either it's a true or it's a false well we can use exactly this to dump the database how let's see if there is a way in which we can ask some questions small small questions to the database so this time we are not going to say that give me the give me the table name or give me the database name or give me the version or give me anything because in in last examples we just gave this command to the database that okay give me this and the database just happily responded okay here it is and we got it but instead of doing it like this let's ask database base some small questions like what is the first character of the database let's say or rather than not putting it like this let's say is the first character of the database s so database will reply true is the second character of the database a the database will reply false so is it e true so you got the concept by changing the way we ask the question to the database the database can respond back let's do some more basics there's a function to break up a string into sub parts it's called substring it is available in almost all programming languages so let's try that out here select database so we have the basic query and we wrap it around in a substring function sub s t r this substring function takes three parameters one is the string then where to start counting and how much to count for so it just returns us s so if we can provide this query in our front end and we say exactly this query select substring database comma 1 comma 1 equals s it will say yeah it is so it will return back true so we'll see you are logged in here else we will not see that this looks cumbersome that we have to iterate over each and every character so to find each character we have to maybe sometimes iterate 26 times well that's true but there are some ways to speed the things up instead of using the alphabets if we use numbers it makes life easy because then rather than using the equals operator we can even use a greater than or a less than 
let's see the use of greater than or less than for example we can say and one is less than two that is true is one greater than false so with the integers it's easy for us to just assume many numbers and do a random and a quick query so how can we do that we'll use another function called ASCII it returns us 115 let's check it on internet In decimal, it's 115. So let's double check one more thing. The second character is E. So what would be the number returned for E? Let's check it. It should be 101. So if we see that we have a valid range between 97 222 let's try it out correct when we told our query that select this and start from the second character and count one so just choose the second one So we got E. Same way we can get more. So now we are evaluating true and false. So is this query equals 101 true? Or we can say, is this query less than 101? It's false. Because it's equal to, it's not less than. Let's try the third one and try to guess it ourselves. So this time we say, is the third character less than 101 it says true okay let's make it 97 then oh it became 197 and it becomes a false that means a valid value lies between 97 and 101 let's try 99 again a false let's try 100 100 is true so the value is less than 100 and if we try 99 it becomes a false so let's check it and there we go we get the third character to be 99 and let's check our ASCII table 
and that's correct because C is 99. So this is actually the core logic for our blind injections. Let's refine this more and we can just say let's use another bracket inside and let's use a select so it works and we can just remove the database and we can say version and let's start with the first character and we know that we are going to check the version of MySQL so major version is 5 so let's say select ASCII substring select version 1 comma 1 is it equal to 5 it says no But why does it say no? Can someone answer? Okay, I leave it to you guys to think it over. I will get back to this in the next video. If somebody knows, please or somebody understood why it is happening this way, then please write it in the comments. And let's come back and let's do this query inside the front end. Because it is AND, so we have to include another parenthesis to wrap this up. And we get urine and if we move it something else 98 and we get a false let's try to enumerate a bigger query we can maybe copy this over and do it in a notepad because it will make things easy or let's do it here itself that doesn't make the difference select table underscore name from information underscore schema dot tables where table underscore schema equals database name if I press enter there would be an error coming out we didn't get the output as we expected why because there are too many rows being returned limit 0 comma 1 to just speed this thing up we know the first table name is emails so the first character would be e and e is 101 so let's try it out this whole thing is we can use greater than or less than sign is less than 105 true because you see you are in and is it less than 99 false because you don't see anything
100 false Hundred two is true, so let's try hundred one. False. So the value is between hundred one and hundred two. So let's use an equal to sign to be sure of. And there you go. The first character of the table. is E. Now you guys will be thinking that this is quite cumbersome and this is quite laborious. Definitely. But if you use tools like Burp or Zap or Fiddler, then you can semi-automate the process or you can even write your script that can just take the return, the response from the server and parse it. This is the core logic of how blind injection boolean based works. This is all for the video. Thank you very much. And guys, as usual, I would request you to leave a feedback that will help me motivate and make more good videos. Thank you very much and bye-bye.